These are problems from the textbook from Chapter 6, Section 4. The title of the chapter is Percent of a Number. And so let's take a look at the, one of the sets of directions. They're kind of similar. Some of the directions say find the percent of each number. Some of them say this, find the percent of each number, check whether the answer is reasonable. So we'll do that set. And then some even say find the percent of the number and round to the nearest tenth. So we'll stick with these problems. There's a couple ways to do these problems. We can either set up a proportion, or we can use a multiplication trick with these as well. So either way, we'll sh I'll show you both, and you can figure out which way you like better. We'll start with the one with the proportion. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to think of 16 as a fraction. So we're either going to change 16 to a fraction or a decimal. This, the proportion is the fraction method. So we're going to take this 16, and we're going to write it over 100. And we're going to set this equal to this. Now, the word of tells us the whole. We're, we've got two different parts of a fraction. We've got a part and a whole. And the word of tells us that we have the whole. So think of it as 16% of 70. So what they want to know is a part. That's the missing piece. And so we can write this as 16 over 100 equals x, which is our part, over 70. So again, the word of always is associated with the whole. And so when we do this, we would cross multiply. Here's where we get to do that trick. So it's 16 times by 70. And so we write that out, 16 times by 70. And on the other side, we've got the x times by 100. So 100x. So all you're going to do is multiply those two numbers. And so when we do 16 times by 70, well, 16 times 7 makes 112. And then I just add a 0. This all equals 100x. Well, when we divide by... 100, all we have to do is move the decimal point. That's the nice thing about dividing by 100. See, it's just got the number 1, so all the digits are going to be the same. It's just the decimal point's going to move two spaces. So here's where the decimal point is. It moves over 1, 2 spaces. So the answer is 11 and 2 tenths equals x. So that's the part that was missing. The other way to do it is just change the 16% to a decimal. So 16% is the same as 0.16, 16 hundredths. Remember, a number, a percent, is just a number over 100. Remember, 16 over 100. When we divide by 100, the decimal moves two spaces to the left. Well, the word of is associated with the whole, but it also can mean multiply. So 16% of of means to multiply. So I'm going to put a dot there for multiply. And then we've got the number 70. So 70. So we're just going to bring down that 70. So really all we are doing is just multiplying 16 hundredths by 70. And see, we actually did that. 16 times 70, we saw that made the same number, 1,120. But because we're multiplying by 16 hundredths, the decimal point needs to move over one, two spaces. So one, two spaces. So we get the same answer, 11 and 2 tenths. So it's your choice. Do you want to move the decimal point over two spaces and multiply? Or do you want to set up a proportion, multiply the two numbers, divide by 100? It's all the same. It doesn't matter which way you do it. So I'll do one of each type. I'll do one as a proportion, one as a a uh, decimal form, and then one as a proportion again. So let's go ahead and set this up. Since Actually, since I did one as a proportion already, let's go ahead and just set up as the decimal form this time. So 225%. Let's move that decimal over two spaces. So remember, a percent is just a number over 100. When you're dividing by 100, that decimal point moves over two spaces. So now I have 2 and 25 hundredths. Of means to multiply. And 8, well, we're just going to bring that 8 down. And then you multiply these two numbers. And so when I do that, I've got 225, 2 and 25 hundredths times by 8. So I go ahead and multiply those numbers. I get 40. And then I multiply 8 and 2. I get 16 
plus 4, and 16 and 4 give me 20, and then 16 and 2, or 2 times 8 makes 16, plus 2 makes 18. So I get 1,800. So again, you've got to move the decimal one, two spaces. So one, two. So there it is, 18.0, or just 18 would be our answer. And so you can either do it the decimal way, or you can set up the proportion. Either way works. So I'll give you another one with the proportion method here. So we've got 20 over 100 equals, and then 65 is the whole, because of represents the whole. And so when we do this, we're looking for the part, which is x. And so I'm going to cross multiply here. So I'm multiplying 20 times by 65. So I'll put that number up here, 20 times by 65. And then over here, I'm multiplying 100 times by x. So equals 100x. So I go ahead and multiply those two numbers. Remember, it's just 2 times 65, so you're doubling 65. Well, double 6, you get 12. Double 5, you get 10. So it's going to end up making 130. And then I add on that 0 equals 100x. And so when I divide by 100, the decimal point moves over two spaces. So either way you do it, you're doing about the same amount of work. You're dividing the the uh, product of the percent and the number by 100. And that's the same thing you're doing over here. You're multiplying, you're changing the decimal to, or percent to a decimal, then multiplying. Either way, you're doing the same steps, just in a different order. So here the decimal point moves over one, two spaces. So 13 is the answer. Well, one more here. This one's a little different. It has a decimal already. So again, go with both methods here. We'll do the 2 and 9 tenths over 100 equals x over 60. So this is the proportion method. So when you do this method, you're just multiplying the percent and the number. So we go ahead and do that. The 2 and 9 tenths times by 60 equals 100x. So I go ahead and do that math. The 2 and 9 tenths times by the 60 ends up giving me 100, actually 1,740, but then I have to move the decimal back one space, so it's 174, equals 100x. So when we divide by that 100, it moves that decimal point over two spaces. So we go ahead and move it one, two spaces, and we get our answer, 1 and 74 hundredths equals x. So that would be the same way we could get it by using that other method, which says we can move the decimal initially. So let's just go ahead and do that one more time. And so I'll take this 2 and 9 tenths percent. If I want to move that decimal one, two spaces, I'd have 0 0.029. Well, from there, all you have to do is multiply by 60. We're going to get the same number. 60 times 29 gives you... 1,740. Well, now let's count the spaces that we'd move the decimal. It'd be 1, 2, 3. So we move it 1, 2, 3. The same answer you get, 1 and 74 hundredths. So there it is. That is finding the percent of each number. Check for reasonableness. Well, what we'd want to do here in this case is look at the number and estimate the percent. So let's go ahead and do that real quick just to see if these answers make sense. It's always a good idea to check to see if your answers make sense. So let's take a look at 16% of 70. Well, 16%, uh, that's pretty close to maybe like 20%. It's a little off, but not too bad. So if I use 20% and I change 70, oh, let's keep it the same. Let's just do times point by 70. And so I'm going to move this this is like 0.2 times by 70, and when I do this, I end up with 14. And then I have that extra zero, but I move it back. Well, I got a little bit bigger number, but I moved the percent up by 4%. So those numbers are pretty close, 14 and 11.2. Someone who's 14 years old is pretty close to somebody who's 11 years old, not too far off. So it's reasonable, so that checks out. Check for reasonableness on this one, 225%. That's kind of big. Well, what I would do is 
move that maybe to, let's go with uh, 230%. So it'll be just a little bit easier. So what we do is move that decimal back two spaces. So 2.3. Actually, let's go ahead and just go with 200%. Let's go with just 2. 2 times by 8. Well, 2 times by 8 gives us 16. 16 is pretty close to 18. So yeah, that checks out. So I even made that problem easier for me. I, as I was looking at 2.3 times 8 seems kind of tough. Again, this stuff should be done in your head. So that's what you're doing here. You're coming up with easier numbers. 20%. Well, actually, I'm going to use that same number. But let's go with this. Let's make 65. Let's make that 70. So 0.2, change 20% to a decimal, 0.2, times by 7 gives me 14. And since I'm dealing with this extra zero here, I'll add it on and then move that decimal back. I get 14. Well, pretty close to 13. So that checks out. So that is reasonable. I think it's right. Same thing over here. Let's check this one. 2.9%. Well, that's pretty close to 3. Pretty close to 3%. Well, how do I do 3%? Well, remember from last section, we do 1% times by the number of 60. And then we add 3. We times that by 3. And so 1% of 60. Well, remember, 1% is 0 0.01. So 1 times 60 gives us 60, but we got to move the decimal back two spaces. And then times by 3. And when we multiply 3 times uh, 0.6, we end up with 18, or actually 180, but i got to move the decimal back two spaces. So 1.8. Pretty close to 1.74. So yes, it's reasonable. So checking for reasonableness just means estimating.